Welcome back to Patriot Network. We have another exciting episode today. I want to continue talking to you about the President's proposed budget. In the last episode, I mentioned to you that the proposed spending in the new budget coming from President Obama is $3.8 trillion plus $1.6 trillion for the deficit for a total spending of $5.4 trillion. Now, I'm trying to lay out some context for the budget. I'm trying to give you a way to understand these numbers because believe me, uh, I've studied the U.S. federal budget for the last 30 years and it is just mind-numbing when you start to look at these numbers and it's totally beyond the pale to really grasp what's going on. But just a little bit of context. When we look at a budget, and this is the President's proposal, he's proposing to spend $5.4 trillion. That is a sum of money that is beyond human comprehension in terms of really grasping it. But, you know, in, in the literal sense, that's a stack of $100 bills from here to the planet Pluto. I mean, it's just insane what you're talking about in terms of the amount. But what the President, what the president has proposed is nowhere near as bad as what the President's not telling you. As I've mentioned to you before, there's on-budget items and off-budget items. The war in Iraq, off-budget. The war in Afghanistan, off-budget. The pending bailout of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And we don't know if Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to be first to be bailed out or if Social Security is going to be first to be bailed out. But one of those three big expenses, Social Security, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, is looming off in the distance. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac represent somewhere five, maybe six trillion dollars, maybe seven trillion dollars. It's difficult to say without an actual audit of all their assets and really getting down to the brass tacks. It's hard to know what they've done in the federal government. Obama lied, transparency died. C-SPAN wasn't there for the medical care debate. C-SPAN's not there to show us what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have in real obligations. Most estimates run six to seven trillion bucks. But even more disturbing than the president's budget is the fact that the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, stated, and you have to dig through it, they don't actually put up a banner and say, hey, here's a problem, but you have to dig through it. And going through the CBO numbers, I discovered that for the first time in 25 years, Social Security will pay out more money than it takes in in taxes. For the last basically three decades, Social Security has been dumped into the general fund. And then an IOU goes over to your account. So there's your social security number, 11111111. Okay, there's your little, as Mr. Gore and Mr. Bush said in the 2000 debate, the lockbox for social security. Okay, there's your account. Well, no cash ever went to your account. What went to your account was an IOU saying we'll sell treasury bills when you get ready to retire. The problem with that is for the whole of the baby boomer's lifespan, the baby boomers, those born between 1946 and 1964, have paid in more to Social Security than every, any previous generation. And they've provided a wonderful retirement for the greatest generation, for the World War II, the class of 45 guys. We have given those people a wonderful retirement, but there's not a penny in Social Security. There is no money there. There are I used to sell treasury bills. So, in what can only be described as the greatest Ponzi scheme ever conceived of, the U.S. federal government took the money of the baby boomers, gave it to their parents, the World War II generation, to provide for their Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Now, as we get ready to retire, and you know, those of us in the boom, we started retiring two, three years ago, let's see, what was it, two, two years ago, we the first of the boomers started to retire. I'd like to retire five years from now. There is no money in Social Security, and for the first time in 25 years, Social Security had more money go out than it had come in. Now, during the 80s and the 90s, Social Security was what was keeping the budget from looking even worse. In the, in the heyday of the 90s, when President Clinton was drag, you know, drug, excuse me, kicking and screaming to a balanced budget by the Republican Congress, the budget wasn't even really balanced then because what they were doing was taking the Social Security money and dumping it into the general fund to make it look like there was a surplus. If we would have been investing the Social Security money in the retirement of the baby boomers at that time, we still, after everything we went through in the 90s to get the budget quote-unquote balanced, it wouldn't have been in balance. Today, CBO says, and you got to dig through the numbers to see it, that Social Security is paying out more than it's taking in. 
So what's the next big bailout? Is Social Security next? Is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac next? Well, whatever it is, there are trillions of dollars of unfunded liability. Anyone who seriously looked at the numbers, and there are several people who have done uh, wonderful work on this. Uh, the Coming Generational Storm is a, is a great book by an economist from uh, Boston uh, University who is, has done great, great work on this. But if, if you want to read through this and start looking at the total unfunded liability of the U.S. federal government for Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, not to mention Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you get very quickly to a number that is above $100 trillion, trillion with a T. You get very, very quickly to a number that's above $100 trillion if you throw in the federal debt and if you throw in other loan obligations and promises that we have out there that are just floating in the air waiting to be enforced. You can easily get to a number that's somewhere between $140 and $170 trillion in total obligation debt liability that the federal government has come and due. So I want to say right now to every person who's listening to my voice that the current budget proposed by the President of the United States is an absolute, it's a neutron bomb in terms of what it will do to the American economy. It will destroy, the buildings won't be knocked down but all the people will be dead, the economy will be dead. We cannot spend $5.4 trillion. That cannot be done. It is not sustainable. If we do spend that kind of money, we will destroy what we think of as the United States of America. Our credit rating will go from the top of the scale to the bottom. People will not buy our bonds. We will not be able to finance our debt. If the president goes forward with this bill, if Congress doesn't come to its senses and say we're not going to spend $3.8 trillion, we're not going to run a deficit of $1.6 trillion, we're not going to continue to bail out Social Security, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, everything else, if we don't get some fiscal restraint and rationality, we are on the edge of a fiscal nightmare the likes of which no one has seen. It will make the Great Depression look like a picnic. There is no way to frighten you enough about what is coming. Now, unfortunately, most Americans don't understand the, pro the budget process of the state they live in or the U.S. federal government. And, you know, I've done some of these numbers with you before, but I want you to just grasp that reasonable people who study this problem say that the total unfunded liability of the U.S. federal government is in between somewhere in the neighborhood of $140 trillion and somewhere upwards of $175 trillion. We cannot be spending money like the President is suggesting. If we do, we are bankrupting ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, and we're bankrupting this country. The President, the most disingenuous, all, I would say delusional thing the President had to say was we're going to cut spending by 1%. There is no cut in this budget. We're spending $5.4 trillion online. We're spending another trillion dollars offline. And if we have to come through for Social Security, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac, Pick a number, 10 trillion, 12 trillion, 30 trillion, pick a number. It is insane to even talk about budgets of this size. The U.S. federal budget has to be cut. We need an immediate cut of 10 to 20 percent across the board. We need to go through with a hatchet and cut federal programs. We need to look at going to the heart of the structural budget deficit, which is Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security and making those not entitlements, but making them means-tested welfare programs because that's the only way we can afford them. Even though I paid into Social Security and Medicare my whole life, I know for a fact they're broke and I have structured everything in my retirement plan so that I don't need them. I advise all of you to come to grips with the fact that we can't afford them. You take out interest on the debt and defense, what's left? 75 cents on the dollar is Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Can we afford that? We used to have 16 workers for every one retiree. We're down to six workers for every one retiree. In five years when I want to retire, we'll be down to three workers for every one retiree. Can we afford that? No. We'll talk more about budget in the future, but in the meantime, I would urge you to contact your member of the House and your member of the U.S. Senate, the House and Senate, and the President, and say, stop this insane spending. Cut the budget. All right, folks, even though that's tough news, get out there and enjoy the day.